Let's get into some Lions news here, folks, and that's what we're going to talk about here. A little bit of a news, Lions signing, Michael Badgley. We'll get into that a little bit. Um, uh, the, the Lions talking about potentially what would be good about getting Jared Goff for long-term extension and some other uh, free agency news um, uh, or rumors that's taking place regarding our Detroit Lions. So that's what we're going to get into in today's video. I know it's a little bit bland as of late. Why? Because nothing's happening right now. But it's going to change in about a week very quickly. So, hey, this offseason is definitely a fast one. It is definitely something that we're not used to. But we got to get this thing a-flowing. So, let's get this video started. The road to 10,000 subscribers starts right now. So if you're watching this and not subscribed, smash it. If you want a perspective from a fan like myself, as well as a former player in Herman Moore, you need to hit that subscribe button because that's all we do on this bad boy. Just kind of break down whatever is happening in the world of the Detroit Lions, especially in this, in this period of not much going on. But trust me, as soon as free agency hits, the draft hits, it's on like Donkey Kong, and then in the summer, you know, there's a little bit of a lag there, and then we're back on with training camp, so that's just how the NFL season works, and we all know it, but the Detroit Lions did re-sign Michael Badgley, and I think we all expected this. you got to have your kicker here. It doesn't necessarily mean, I want this, people kept saying, Mike, this means it's the kicker for good. No, it's not, does not mean we re-sign him, he's going to be the kicker for good, they're going to bring in competition for Michael Badgley. But I do like Michael Badgley. Uh, look, he, he's a solid. He's not the best kicker in the world. He's not the worst. He's solid. He's just right there. We can always do an upgrade. We can always get better. But it's not like it's a bad thing to have him back. But we need to get competition at the kicker position. And that's what they're going to do in the, the draft or post-draft undrafted free agent. They're going to bring kicker in here to compete with Michael Badgley. It's just what they're going to do. It's been happening in the last couple of years. Expect it to happen again. And they attempted to do it with, there with Riley Patterson. It didn't work. And we, we've been through multiple kickers. And we're always going back to the Mr. Reliable Michael Badgley. And that's good. But they're going to continue to bring in competition. So don't believe that this is just the end of the kicker situation. They're not going to do anything. I fully expect they'll draft one and or pick one up as an undrafted free agent after the draft. That's what's going to happen there at the kicker position. And you just let the best man win. There you go. So cool that I'm happy that Michael Badgley is back. I got no hate against the guy. And, uh, you know, if, if worse comes to worse, he's not, you know, he's on our roster. It's not the worst. It's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, we could have worse. This is interesting here because I was talking to Huge uh, last night on the radio station, and we did a nice little segment about the several coaching changes that is taking place, and we got a little bit uh, in-depth about it, and I, I agree. You know, letting Dre Bly walk, uh, defensive line walk, they knew exactly, we're talking about the coaching staff here, what the weaknesses of this football team and they're in no patience to be waiting. They want to get better immediately. They understand that they are in a, you know, a an era, uh, a couple years of a Super Bowl window, right? They understand this, and they went scorched earth, removed coaches who they feel underperformed, and went and got better. Williams there from Tennessee Titans is actually a pretty damn good defensive line coach, new secondaries coach. I don't know if it's Dre Bly was the real reason why our corners were playing bad, but clearly it wasn't working out. And if it's not working out, you make a coaching change. We love Dre Bly as a Detroit Lion when he was a player. He just didn't do well enough as a coach. It doesn't mean that he's a terrible coach. It just didn't work out here. Remember, Anthony Lynn didn't work out here. And we got Ben Johnson. He put in that role. That's just the way that it works. So we're going to continue to funnel through some of these coaches. And we're going to continue to uh, improve on all part of this football team, coaching included. It's not just about roster. It's also about coaching and, and, and personnel. So hopefully, hopefully the changes made will make this defense better. Because make 
no mistake about it. The Detroit Lions got to get better defensively for us to get back to an NFC Championship game and attempt to make a Super Bowl. Teams are improving in the NFC, specifically the NFC North, and so you cannot just stay the same and expect to continue to be really good. you got to continue to innovate and get better from all parts of this franchise. And that is good about Brad Holmes. That's good about Dan Campbell is they're not happy with the same. They want to continue to get success. And they know they have an opportunity right now to make a jump into a Super Bowl and they're going to make the moves to continue to get to that spot. They're not going to be happy with the status quo. They're going to continue to fight. That's why I love why we got our coaches here. And this was an interesting talk about the pros and cons of re-signing Jared Goff. Again, I was on the huge show last night, talked about this, asked me what would be the best solution should the Detroit Lions re-sign Jared Goff this offseason or wait? And... I know the pros and cons of both. I haven't even read the article. But I do believe re-signing Jared Goff is the best solution. Everybody knows I love Hennon Hooker. But Jared Goff got us to an NFC Championship game. And the guy is a winner. He wasn't the reason we didn't make a Super Bowl. Okay? It was not his reason. He did something that... Pretty much no other quarterback in Lions history, besides in the 50s, have done. Bobby Lane, okay, got us this far. In the era of the 90s, Herman Moore and Barry Sanders in, in, in that era. Okay, so when you have a quarterback that can do that, I want him on the team. You cannot just look at stats alone. You cannot just look at what you see on the field alone. There is an intangible part of a quarterback. Quarterbacks have not and there is something about winning. Some quarterbacks win, and some don't. And when you have a quarterback that wins, for whatever reason, they're completely calm in the most hectic moments of a football game, and that's extremely rare to have. You got to keep that guy. Jared Goff, Nearly brought two teams to a Super Bowl, okay? One being the Detroit Lions. He brought the Rams. That's up there with the Tom Brady's. That's up there with Peyton Manning, okay? That's a rarity. He is not the most explosive quarterback in the NFL. He's not the most athletic, gifted quarterback in the NFL. doesn't have the best arm in in the NFL. But it is hard to argue that he is one of the best clutch quarterbacks in football. Patrick Mahomes is up there as the best clutch guy. Nobody expected them to do to, to, to go into Baltimore and win. A lot of people thought San Francisco would win. But the, the guy is clutch, okay? For whatever reason, in the big moments, they come through. Jared Goff, in the big moments, come through. It just does occur. He has that in his DNA. And... Just because you can't put that on a stat and I can't read it off on a stat to you, it does not mean anything. And I'm going to tell you right now, I fully believe this. 110%. If the Lions were in the Super Bowl, if it was the 49ers versus the Kansas City Chiefs, I would fully believe the Detroit Lions would be champions. 100%. I'm not getting rid of that. Okay? I'm not going to do it. He's 29. We got some le- we got some time left with this with this type of quarterback with this type of DNA. We got a window and we got to utilize it because we're going to be in big games. And Jared Goff, guess what in big games he just wins. That's what he does. If it's you got to get a first down, it happens nearly every time. Nearly every time. The ball is placed exactly where it needs to be. Either the wide receiver gets it, or he doesn't. But that's not that's not Jared Goff's fault if the guy don't catch the football like Josh Reynolds. But he has that in his DNA. I don't. 
I've never seen anything like it. At least from a Lions perspective, just a guy who is clutch and you can't get rid of clutch. So yeah, is there a risk? Yeah, you're gonna you could potentially lose a little bit of cap. Not this year. I think if they were to extend him this year, you're you're good cap wise, but in a couple years, yeah, so what? So what? I could tell you right now, a lot of teams would love to have a Jared Goff. And remember, if you do if uh, remember, when we had Matthew Stafford, everybody everybody trashed him in the media. Okay? Everybody trashed him. Oh, he's not that great. As soon as we got rid of Matthew Stafford, he's now one of the greatest quarterbacks, blah, 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 blah. It is the same thing with Jared Goff. If you were to let him walk, I can guarantee you, you're going to hear nothing but love about Jared Goff, say if he went to a, an Atlanta Falcon or something like that, and he starts winning over there. So, keep him. I don't think he's going to demand some crazy amount of money. He's not going to do that. I, I, I see him... Probably 47, 48 million. That's where he'll land. He's not going to ask for no 60 million, no 55 million. He knows that he needs assets around him. He knows he's not perfect. He knows he needs weapons. He's not some selfish guy. So we got to keep Jared Goff, folks. It ain't the, the sexiest name. I, I, I don't know. And I get asked this a lot, even on the on the radio station, I get asked this a lot. Should we keep Jared Goff? And it's, I I don't know what the real negative is to keep him for. He has proven now, three years as a Detroit Lion, that he's a damn good quarterback. He's proved it. There's not, for me, there's nothing else for him to prove that he shouldn't be the Lions quarterback. Yes, I like mobile quarterbacks. I loved Hendon Hooker. I do, and I prefer the mobile quarterback over the the stand in the pocket quarterback. But guess what? There's kind of exceptions. And when you have when you have somebody with the DNA of the winning DNA of Jared Goff, you keep that guy. Okay? Would you rather have a guy who's mobile who fails in the big game? No. And I'm sorry to say, we gotta talk uh, that and a guy who I really like. I absolutely love. But there is going to be questions now about Lamar Jackson or a Josh Allen who can't win those big games. And I love those guys. But in the big moments, they have not done it yet, and they got to prove it. Jared Goff proved that he can do it. So I'm sticking with Jared Goff. That's my thoughts. Let me know in the comment section about uh, your thoughts about Jared Goff. With that said, folks, adios.